Good afternoon. You are with the Vermont House Government Operations Committee. Uh, we are coming back to some uh, testimony we weren't able to get to this morning. And so I wanted to invite uh, Jeff Briggs to share a few comments with us. Um, and uh, definitely please leave time for a few questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you um, to the House Government Operations Committee for having me here this afternoon. Um, my name is Jeff Briggs. I'm a current uh, alternate member of the VPIC, uh, which I've been on since 2014. Uh, and I was a member of the Vermont State em Employees Retirement System Board of Trustees from 2009 to 2017, uh, when I had to leave that board when I retired. Um, and I would, I would like to um, kind of give you a, a, a little bit different view of, uh, the, of the proposed government changes um, that you're considering uh, from the perspective of somebody who's spent a lot of time on both boards. A little bit more about my background. Um, I'm an accredited pension fiduciary uh, through the National Conference on Public Employee Retirement Systems, uh, which was a course that I took uh, over the period of a couple of years. Uh, and several um, times uh, I attended in-person trainings uh, a lot of online training and, um, and, and, and pass a test to get that. Um, I've also attended hundreds of hours of education and training over both, uh, o o on, over my years of service on both boards. So I just wanted to add a little bit more about my background. Um, you, your committee heard Excellent testimony this morning on the governance, but I, I want to have a provide a few more comments on on uh, government from from my perspective. But before I do that, I would like to make uh, a couple comments about the overall changes in the uh, pension system that you're considering. I think all too often. Uh, this conversation about pension, pension reform, pension funding is uh, framed in terms of cost. And I would like to ask the committee to uh, look at this, look at our, our pension system as an investment in the state of Vermont. I think it's one of the very best investments that we make. Um, uh, uh, Speaking about the VSERS, which I'm most familiar, uh, last year we had $150 million was paid out in benefits to beneficiaries of VSERS. And that money is spent, um, right, it's recycled right back into the Vermont economy. It's spent uh, in local stores, local businesses, um, and, and uh, we did a study, um, there was a study done back, I would guess around 2012, that estimated that for every dollar in benefits uh, spent by beneficiaries in the Vermont economy, there was a multiplier effect of uh, one, one or two dollars more. And uh, so I, I, I wanna make the point that it's a great investment we all too often think of it as a cost. Um, it's a great investment, and and furthermore, you know, 60, 62 percent of that investment comes from um, pension fund uh, investment return. So I, I want to make that point. Uh, going to the government's proposal, uh, I'm opposed to the current proposal. And the question that I would like to pose for this committee is, is this proposal that you put out um, 
being proposed to punish the VPIC for past performance, or is it to improve future results? And a couple caveats to that statement. I'm not, uh, I'm not accusing the committee or anybody on the committee of, um, of wanting to punish the VPIC, but I base that on the tenor of some of the, some of the testimony that I've heard, which I think is very much looking to um, find find a, a, um, a villain in all this, and and it seems like this proposal has um, landed here. You're you're proposing to throw out the VPIC and start all over again, and I think that's the wrong approach. Uh, having said that, I I want to say uh, the committee is absolutely right to ask the question about governance. Um, I would do the same thing if I was in your shoes, but uh, I think it's entirely the wrong approach to, to throw out what we have. And, you know, you heard some, you heard some testimony this morning um, about uh, where where the VPIC is at currently. Um, you heard from Eric Henry, who's our chief investment officer, doing an excellent job. You heard from our new consultant, RVK. Um, and, you know, I, I think, uh, I would hope the committee doesn't make the mistake of conflating uh, how we got here, which is a valid question, with where we're at now, because I think where the VPIC is at now is re really in a, um, a good position, good position to move forward and address this pre-funding crisis that we're in. Uh, the VPIC has access to uh, a lot of good professional advice, uh, you know, RVK, is our new consultant. Um, it, we were led, we have good leadership. Uh, I had the pleasure of serving on the committee with Tom Galanka before when he was just a member, uh, before he became the chair. One of the very best members we've ever had. Um, we, I think we really strengthened the committee when we hired him as a chair. Uh, I've been on the VPIC through a couple different consultants, a couple different actuaries. I, the point I want to make is we're always, it's an evolving process. We're always striving to improve. And I think you can uh, make some minor adjustments, but I think the current structure of the VPIC is the right one. And I think uh, I would urge you to support the, the governance study that VPIC recently um, voted to pursue instead of your current proposal, which throws the whole structure out. Um, I, I also want to say that, and I don't know if this has come up in your testimony, but you know, VPIC has an investment policy and as a fiduciary the, of the VPIC, uh, it's, a, it's a policy that I'm obligated to follow. Uh, our policy, uh, it's the three, three of the central elements of our policy are, um, are, are managing the portfolio uh, with regard to risk. We always have to consider risk in any investment approach we take. Uh, we also, a central ten tenet of the policy is uh, to select in, uh, investments that will give us lower volatility. Uh, volatility is one of the things that makes it really challenging uh, to to uh, meet uh, rates of return. So risk, volatility, um, asset allocation, and of course we always have to maintain liquidity. So uh, there is a, 
an investment policy that we follow. It's one that we've revised um, in, the, in the time that I've been there. Um, but it's what guides us in, in making um, our, our investments and on, on a day-to-day on a, a -day and month-to-month -month basis. Um, I, I, I guess what I want to really address some of the specifics of the um, proposal. My understanding is that this proposal is modeled on, New, on the New Hampshire model. Um, and, you know, I, in my view, the New Hampshire model is deeply flawed. Uh, it's a, it's a system that I think is probably in, in worse shape as far as funding uh, than our system is. They're only 61% funded. They have over $6 billion in um, liabilities that, you know, and that's up from 5 billion only three years ago. And that's a, that's a system that uh, a requirement of that system is that all of the trustees who serve on it are um, have to have financial expertise. And so my point isn't to disparage New Hampshire or disparage our trustees. My point is that um, even, you know, I, I, I think, I think if, if you're thinking that uh, you're gonna throw out the VPIC, establish a new system, uh, with every, where everybody has financial expertise. It, I think if you're thinking that's gonna solve the problem, I think all you gotta do is look at New Hampshire to figure out that it isn't gonna solve the problem. They face the same challenging market conditions that we have over the last decade uh, and they're not doing any better. So, uh, I think New Hampshire is not the right model to, to follow. Uh, the next thing I want to address is, uh, by my count, this proposal gives the governor um, control over six appointees and the, the, the treasurer four. Um, and and I think this is a, you know this is a crucial point for me. I think it. Um, this shifts, it really takes away representation of the, of the three member systems and, um, and, and, and gives that power to the governor. And I think that's a, not only is that not best practice, but it's, a, um, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's not gonna help us move forward. Um, Mr. Briggs, I have a hand up right now. Rob yeah. LeClaire has a question for you. Okay, um, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, good afternoon, Mr. Briggs. How are you, sir? Good. How are you? Um, I, like probably most people on the committee, had read the testimony that you had submitted. Um, thank you for that. Um, one of the questions that I have of that, actually, was a question that I had asked earlier this morning or earlier today. Um, you refer to the, the, I think it was 07, 09, market issue that we had back then as being substantially responsible for where we are today. Um, would you be able to, I guess, quantify, in your opinion, what that represents of the 5.8 billion that we're upside down in today? Well, here's, here's the way I, I can, the numbers that I can give you, you know, 2007, we were over 100% funded. I think the exact uh, number was 100.8 uh, or something, not, not 108, but just over 100. Uh, and, and by 2010, uh, 2011, we were down to 78% funded. So we, we took essentially a 22% a hit and, our, and I'm talking about V-Surge now, I wanna make that clear. We took a 22% hit in our funded status. Uh, and you know, you, you don't make that up 
and a and a decade. You know, you know that's that's roughly in order to make up that twenty two percent. Now you've got twenty two divided by seventy eight. It's it's nearly a quarter of of what you had to to overcome. And I you know I think if you do the math, uh, you've got to you've got to make up twenty five or thirty percent. Uh, you don't don't you don't just make up twenty two percent and get back to hundred percent funded. So you've got to you've got to make up an extraordinary amount when you take a big uh, dip like that. And you're not going to do it in a short period of time. The only way you're going to do it uh, would be to take excessive risk. And and uh, as a fiduciary of the system. Uh, I think I just explained to you that that's one of the central elements we look at with any investment is uh, we don't want to take undue risk. Uh, and the, lo the level of risk that you would have to take to make that up in a short period of time is just, you know, it's not something that we're, we um, are going to be able to do. And um, you know, I think when I came on the VPIC in 2014, uh, and and I had started attending some meetings before then, I I think the VPIC, like almost every pension investment committee around the country, was still uh, reeling from that event, and um, and you know, risk was paramount in our considerations because one thing you can't do in a pension system is um, is you know you, you can't suffer these big downside events it, they're just too hard to make up so uh, you know I think going forward uh, that one event took a lot out of our our ability to pre-fund the system and it's going to be a while before we make that up very good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Briggs. I appreciate your, your time. Thank you, sir. Yeah. John Gannon. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thank you, Mr. Briggs, for testifying this afternoon. Um, you know, I, like Representative LeClaire, I read your testimony. And the, the one thing I'd like some, some more information is that in your, your final paragraph, you say there are areas of improvement that could be made, such as separating BPIC from the Treasurer's Office. Um, giving the PICA a, a, its own budget and thoughtfully adding more legislative oversight. Um, could you explain that a little more, please? Yeah, uh, um, yeah, and I'm sorry, I was going to get to that in my presentation, but, um, you know, of course, I think we should look, we should use this opportunity, we, should, we, we shouldn't even need this opportunity to improve VPIC. we should be continually looking to improve. Um, what you know? So I'll I'll I, I talked a little bit about um, hiring um, uh, uh, Eric Henry, I think, as our CIO, um, which which we were finally able to do. Um, but because because VPIC doesn't have his own budget, uh, there were a number of years in in the middle part of the of the last decade where the state of Vermont, the, the, the budget was so tight, we didn't, we didn't have the ability to advocate for a CIO position. And, and um, you know, I don't know if we would have had a better ability if we had our own budget, but the, it, it took a couple of years to get uh, a position like that added to the VPIC. And, you know, when I, when I first uh, got on the VPIC, we didn't have, um, uh, 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 we had some very fine people, but we didn't have the robust staff that we've had today. And, you know, we've had to really, really, really kind of um, fight to, to add all of those positions. So my point in that, uh, that the VPIC ought to be separate from the treasurer's office, I think really comes from a, a, a budgetary perspective uh, as much as anything else. Um, I, I also think it's, you know, it's appropriate to add more legislative oversight. I mean, you know, we're here, you're concerned with it. Uh, 
everybody's concerned with it. I think it's it would be a win for the legislature, be a win for us to, to have a better tie um, for legislative oversight. And, and one thing I, I didn't have in that uh, proposal, but you know, since, since we're on it and I, I'd like to just talk about it, uh, you know, I view this as primarily a, an actuarial crisis. In my opinion, the fund is sustainable. We've done a couple um, liquidity um, and, and, you know, benefit payout tests and, and, you know, for the short term, for the near term. And, and really, I think well into the future, we have the assets uh, and we have the liquidity to cover benefit payments. Um, but, you know, it, 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 this whole, the whole, the whole thing with uh, the assumed rate of return, the issues that your committee has been discussing, the reason we're looking at making changes, it's, it's an actuarial projection of what might happen in the future. And, and you know, one of the thoughts I had in, in thinking about this is that perhaps it, it would be good for the legislature to hire its own actuary to, uh, to also have a check on our actuary. Um, I, I know actuaries are supposed to follow standard methodology, um, but I, you know, it's just a suggestion that might might be an improvement. Um, so I, you know, I don't know if I've answered your question, but the, I, I think, uh, given the size of the fund, given given the need for a robust. Um, uh, uh, investment staff, which we now have, but we may, as we grow, we might need more. Uh, I think it would be important for BPIC to have, have its own um, budget. Thank you. So Mr. Briggs, we have um, just about um, 10 more minutes here with you, and then we need to shift gears okay. for our last uh, segment of the day. So if there's any highlights uh, that you wanted sure, to touch I'll, on from yeah, your written sure. testimony, so I, that would be very helpful. Okay, I just wanted to get back to um, what I was, what I, I think I was talking about the governor having control over six appointees. And, you know, I. I just wanted to say a couple things. Um, you know, I, I think just, I think for the governor to appoint someone uh, has, you know, I, I think, first of all, I think they sh the, the current system where we have two governor appointees is entirely appropriate, but to move to six, I think it raises some problems and and uh, I'd just like to highlight a couple of the problems. One of the big ones is, you know, from my experience on the VPIC, the main things that you need are longevity. And, and by longevity, I mean continuity, uh, commitment and experience. And it certainly helps to have a financial background, but I think it would be a mistake to require everyone on the committee to have a financial background. I think you can acquire that knowledge like I have um, if, if you are, are um, get on the state employees retirement board or you, or you get on the VPIC, I think you can acquire that knowledge. But, you know, we've had a, a couple, and, and it's, in my view, it's really been hit or miss with the governor's appointees. We've had some very fine governor's appointees. Uh, we've also had some others um, who frankly uh, have not really had the time required to put into VPIC. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not disparaging any of them, um, but you know, VPIC, it's not a paid position. Uh, a lot of these folks have other jobs that pull them away from from VPIC. Uh, I'll give you one quick example. We had a we had an excellent trustee appointed by uh, an excellent member appointed by the governor, 
who had experience in, in bonds, uh, he was a bond trader, uh, added a lot of value to the VPIC. Um, and, and, you know, great, a great member, but uh, within probably a year, year and a half of getting on the VPIC, his, his um, job changed and, and required a lot of time and he was unable to uh, make a lot of our meetings, um, unable to really put the time in required and, and eventually, you know, resigned. Uh, so it, 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 I think that really illustrates how tough it is for some of our best members to uh, put in the continuity to remain on the VPIC. And, and I'll be honest with you, I think it, no matter what your background is, I think it takes a couple of years just to get up to speed uh, 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 with trying to manage a pension fund of this size. Um, and, um, you know, any governor's appointee is, they're subject to turnover every two years. Um, and, you know, so it, that would be a problem with, with the continuity and, and, and commitment. And I think you heard this morning, um, the, uh, the gentleman from RVK say that uh, just because somebody has a financial background doesn't mean they, they always have uh, the, the necessary skills that are in line, uh, alignment with trying to manage a fund of this size. Uh, and, and, you know, it's financial world has a diverse, um, you know, array of jobs. And, and I think this is a kind of a unique one that, that requires time put in on the committee to, to understand what we're trying to do, uh, and, and where we have our money and where we're going. Um, and and the one, one other thing I wanna say is we had a very fine trustee, Von Altimus. He was a governor's appointee. Uh, one of our best members, always prepared at meetings, understood uh, what we were trying to do. One had a great, plan, uh, you know, a great financial background. Um, and, and he wanted to continue on the committee. He wasn't reappointed, uh, no explanation given. Um, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna disparage his successors, but it was a great loss to the VPIC when we lost Vaughn. So, you know, I, 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 I'm just saying this to highlight the fact that, uh, it, yeah, I don't think you wanna inject politics and the, the, the turnover that politics can bring into this system. And, and you know, I think we're fine with the two current employees, uh, but I, you know, I, I really wanna make sure that you understand that, you know, I think VPIC is a, is a group that needs uh, representation from the members of the system. Uh, it needs representation from the governor. And, and I think we have a great mix now. So thank you so much, Mr. Briggs, for your, um, for your written testimony and also for highlighting the, the most important parts of it. Um, I want to make sure that we leave time um, in the next two minutes to give the committee members an opportunity to ask sure. a question if they have any questions for you or if there's any part that needed some clarification. Mark Higley. Hi, Mark. Hey, Jeff. How are you? Good. Hey. Hey. Uh, so, um, in the governor's pick, there, do um, you think it would uh, help? Is something as simple as just maybe. Uh, a six-year term and making sure that folks that uh, uh, don't uh, serve their time well uh, encourage uh, resignation. I mean, uh, again, you said it's just a two-year appointment. Is that correct? Well, it, it, you know, it, the, my understanding of it is the appointment is up to the governor and they can um, 
you know, I, I, I think it's a two year appointment. Um, Vaughn could tell you better than I could, but if, if the appointment is up, um, at a time when, when we have a new governor, uh, I think they can, you know, I think they can step in and just re replace that person. So I think we would make, uh, you know, I, to, to be honest, I haven't taken a, a look at that on the uh, enabling um, uh, statute. I think the language is probably in there, um, but, I think my main point is that uh, we we don't want a, a fifteen member committee where six of them are appointed by the governor. I think I think our current makeup is fine. Okay, thanks. And, yeah, and I and I'm not saying it's been abused. It hasn't. Um, you know, I can give you a couple examples of where I think it was a bad decision, but the potential is there going forward. Thank you, Jeff. Great. Well, thank you so much for uh, for coming um, very patiently waiting for the end of the day to come back and talk with us. I apologize that we didn't get you in this morning um, and for sharing your written reflections as well as uh, talking with us here this afternoon about your reactions to the governance proposal. And I I think I can speak for uh, Rep Gannon and myself that we uh, we don't to, we don't have any sort of um, need to own or or drive the conversation that was uh, put on the table with a with a governance proposal, and and so we're certainly uh, open to folks making alternative proposals, and that's what we will come back to in a future meeting. So thank you for being with us today, and have a great afternoon. Yeah, and 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 I just want to add one thing. You know, I. I didn't mean to shout at you with my written testimony. I I didn't know if I was going to get to testify in person, so I was trying to just maybe stand out, make my highlighted point stand out from the crowd. But you know, I'm, I have seen some bold and some caps in uh, some written communication recently. So yeah. um, rest assured, no offense taken, and um, and the emphasis is understood. So thank you so much. Thank you for hearing me. And um, so if committee members want to reach out to me, I'm always, always willing to talk. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So committee, we're going to take just a three minute bio break. And uh, so please shut your camera off, um, mute yourself, and we'll be back in three